Ready. I'm hitting it. Do it. All right, I, I think we're going live here. Um, hopefully we are. Uh, if anybody can see this, I know YouTube takes like 10 to 15 seconds to kick in, but uh, just let us know in the chat. Uh, give us a little shout out if you can hear my beautiful voice <laughs> and see us on camera. Uh, and we'll keep an eye on chat. It does look like a couple people are saying, <laughs> hello, new person. Yeah. We, we, should, uh, we should probably introduce ourselves um, yes. since I, I am joined by my wonderful wife, uh, Becca, today. Mm -hmm. So I am Tyler. <laughs> you said my name like three times, so it's going to be weird when I introduce myself. I know, like... but, but it'll, it'll work. <laughs> Got it figured out. So I, I'm Tyler. I'm the lead developer on Cattails. Um, I'm at Falcon Develops on Twitter. Um, I'm Becca, she, her, they, them. I am Becca Ruth one one on um, Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter that often, to be honest. Um, yeah, I do a lot of like the behind the scenes work. Um, I don't know. I never know how to describe my role with Cattails. I made a whole blog post about it on um, herowngame.com. Um, not to like self promo there, but <laughs> no, it's true. She, she does a ton of the, like, yeah. I, I'm kind of like the face of the project, but, um, behind the scenes, Becca's doing a lot of the work. She's doing QA work for us. She's doing dialogue work for the game. I mean, she, she's a sounding board for any time that I have a wacky new idea and I need to bounce it off of somebody. So she is doing a lot, a lot of work on the project. You just don't see her quite as often. And she's mm -hmm. not the one who's always necessarily posting about it. So yeah. Um, that, and I get nervous. I get nervous about like the whole live streaming thing. So like for Tyler, he's like, oh yeah, we're going to do a dev live stream. Want to join? No big deal. And I'm like over here just, yeah, I'm breathing. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Right. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to finally get Becca on the dev live stream. So th this is mm -hmm. dev live stream number three. If you didn't know, um, I did two previous live streams, number one and number two, which were within the last couple of months here. The general format of these goes something like uh, we open it up and we talk about the status of the project, what's been going on lately, that kind of stuff. And then we jump into gameplay. So there's this uh, this demo of the game that's uh, floating out there. A couple content creators have been trying it out, which has been really fun for us to watch and very informative for us. Um, we'll be playing our dev build. It's not quite the same as the demo. It's very, very similar. Um, but the differences there are uh, since that uh, demo went live, I've, of course, still been hashing out some things with the game, fixing some bugs, doing those sort of things. So we'll be jumping into the dev build. It's very similar if you've seen anything like that before, but uh, Becca will actually be playing the uh, development build of the game today. She'll have the controller. Um, I'll be watching chat and mostly talking about that while Becca is commenting on uh, her playthrough and also checking the chat as well. Um, so after we do that introduction, we'll jump into the game. And if you guys have questions about it, you can go ahead and ask us then, but um, to open things up, I, I did I did want to say like wow uh, the Kickstarter is going very well um, a, a lot better than we expected um, so if anybody who's watching right now has backed us on Kickstarter um, has left a comment anything like that thank you so much I mean this this blew us away uh, Tuesday was <laughs> I, Tuesday flew by I mean it, it felt like I hit the the go live button on Kickstarter and then I have no idea what happened it was like uh, a maddening like blur of responding to comments and refreshing the page and checking the messages and all that. Um, but it, it's been awesome. The response to the Kickstarter going live was just way more than we expected. Um, got some, some really good articles written about the game, gotten a ton of good feedback, a lot of positive comments. Um, and so I, I just wanted to express thank you to all of you. We're super, super grateful. Um, I, obviously a lot of you are excited about the game too. Uh, 2,687 of you, uh, to, to be exact. So that's, that's awesome. I mean, I, I can't even imagine that many people right now. Like, yeah. So yeah, we were honestly really worried before we started the Kickstarter that we would have around 200 crampy plushes just in our closet. Cause we, we had ordered, um, around 300 of them, but we couldn't put all of them out because like there were some problems with a couple of them. And also just like keep for like our friends and family and so we were seriously concerned that we would have we have a closet full of 200 of these and we were so worried that for like the next like five years of our lives we would be trying to like pawn them off to people and like trying to like get rid of them 
And then we <laughs> sold out. And then we had to order more. And now we're going to sell out of those. And so it's just crazy because, like, we love Crampy. But other people love Crampy, too. And that's crazy. <laughs> like, we, we have just, like, been so... Um, I don't know. Just blown away. Who wouldn't by... love this face? I <laughs> yeah. mean, he's, I, Crampy's such a such a lovable little character. But I have a hilarious photo somewhere where the shipment of the Crampy plushes came in, and it came in in these like giant bulky cardboard boxes because there's 300 of them, and they're like they're like 12 inches. I mean, roughly in height if you include the the ears. So if you can imagine what 300 of those must have looked like coming into like our house, they were just shipped yeah. to our house. And well, um, Tyler wasn't even there for that. I was just here alone, and the UPS guy showed up with these huge boxes, and so I had to, like, help him carry all these boxes into our house. <laughs> of, like, and then when Tyler came home, I'm like, look, we have these now. What are we going to do? So, so we, we opened up all the boxes in our living room, and we were going through them to, you know, like, quality control. We're checking them all, making sure that they all were, like, stitched right and all that. Um, and I, I snapped a candid photo of Becca, and she's just, like, looking at this box <laughs> of, like, probably 50 crampies in this what one box. What did we get into? With this look on her face that's just, I, it, it's amazing. And I'll probably share that at some point, because it's mm. it's a great photo. Um, but, yeah, so there, there's going to be another shipment of those, I guess, at mm-hmm. some point here, uh, when our manufacturer is, is able to get those over to us. So, that's super cool. There are a couple of these plushies still available. They're not in the physical rewards tier, but if you missed out, the statue tier does actually come with the physical rewards bundle. Uh, there's exactly nine of those left right now, I, I believe. I'll verify that as I'm on the page right now. Um, but this statue tier, yeah, so nine of those left. The statue tier does include all the physical rewards, which includes the plush of Crampy, of course. Um, and it also comes with this awesome uh, customizable cat statue that you can engrave a message on that's going to be left in the Temple of the Forest Guardian in the game. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, speaking of Kickstarter rewards, I think during the live stream today, uh, we'll have a pretty cool preview of at least one of the exclusive pets, maybe both. We'll see how yeah. Becca's feeling about it. Um, because we got that all hooked up uh, on Steam's end of, uh, end of things. And so that's sort of implemented now into the dev build. And uh, we're excited to show that off because I, I think it came together pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, there's been a lot of chat. I haven't really been keeping up with it, to be honest. Uh, but <laughs> once we get into the game, I think things will calm down a little bit. Um, are you ready to I'm jump ready. in and, uh, yeah. and play the game for a little bit? Absolutely. All right, so we're, we're going to hop over to gameplay now. So I'm, I'm going to pull up our dev build. It just needs to compile here. It takes about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so. Um, so you get to enjoy this lovely black screen right now, which is just great content for YouTube, <laughs> I hear, um, while I read a little bit of the chat. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now it's coming up. Um, I, I do I do see a lot of questions about the statues. So the, the statues will be in the temple. Um, our goal is to keep those a little bit out of the way. So they're not like going to be in, in the main walkway where you're like interfacing with the forest guardian. There's going to be sort of two side rooms of the temple and they're going to be like reflective, contemplative, you know, beautiful spaces. So the statues will get put over there. Um, it, it shouldn't impact the performance of the game at all, and it should not uh, increase your amount of time or frustration with completing the objective of the game. So that's the goal there. Okay. Um, let us know if we still sound good and if like the music um, is really loud or anything. Yeah, or if there's feedback at all, because that's yeah. uh, something that we would want to avoid. I, so, so far, so good. I haven't seen anyone say. Should anything. I kind of explain what's what's going on with my save file? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. So my goals. I'm pretty like early on in the file. Um, I'm on summer three. Um, my plan is to become really good friends with Bob. Um, I wrote a lot of the dialogue for Bob, and so I really want to get to know them better, and honestly, I want to proofread my work. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> it's a great opportunity. So that's why. Um, and I'm kind of um, not becoming as good of friends with the other cats, unfortunately, just because I'm lazy. Um, and my other goal has been to do more in the mines, um, which Tyler can talk about. Um, the, the next stretch goal is to expand what we're doing there. And if you played Cattails 1, then... Um, 
you're probably gonna be really surprised by what we already have done with the mines. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty different and really exciting. So we want to take what we already have and um, add a couple of mines and expand that. Yeah, I, I will definitely uh, talk about the mines at some point during the playthrough here. There's a lot of love for Bob in the chat here. Um, every Everybody loves Bob, and I, I totally get why. I, I posted like these little profiles to Twitter of several of the cats. Um, I think Bob's had more likes and retweets than any of the cats. Um, uh, partially, you know, that that lovely, very lovable face uh, that, that Narabas Artworks uh, was able to draw for Bob, I think fits the character very, very well. Um, so I have an issue with our setup we should figure out. Oh, okay. The way, okay. Oh, is this this blocking your this view? This is blocking the view well, of the I, controls I on the bottom. I like, I can't see it. to this monitor. Would that make it better? But then you won't be facing the... <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Oh. <laughs> Maybe put it over here. Does that work? Or... Would it be better ever? I'm gonna move that. Put it back. That now. could that could work actually. That could I'm work not. Really I'm well. so I'm playing sorry, on the control. Sorry for this sorry. noise. I'm playing on the Logitech whatever computer controller, and instead of like the keyboard because the keyboard's really noisy, and so that's how we got to this point. I need to be able to see like the A to talk. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I, I think we got it figured out. Um, yeah. Dragging the mic across the desk. That might have been a little bit noisy, so <laughs> thanks for bearing with us there. Um, oh, I, I also wanted to point out that um, we're joined by another member of the Cat Hills team tonight. Hey, you um, should go get her. Here we have Buttercup, who is actually in the game as well. Um, she's sleeping right now on our couch. Um, but Buttercup is in the game and uh, a very important member of our team. Mm -hmm. We call her our resident cat intern. I, I see some questions about Spark. Uh, so Spark will be marriageable in this game. Spark is a young adult, is the way that we envision that character. Uh, so yes, Spark is youthful, and yes, Spark is Ember's child, but Spark is definitely old enough um, to, to be marriageable. They're sort of the equivalent of, you know, a 19 or a 20 year old in, in human terms. I see a question about what cats will come from the old game to the new one. That's a great question. Um, the ones that, uh, they're, they're actually already in the demo. So Ember is going to be there. Uh, Ember runs the shop. Crampy's going to be there. Crampy runs the clinic. Uh, Jag is going to be there from the mountain domain. And Jag is kind of like the, the town watch. And uh, Ellie as well. So Ellie was the name changing cat who showed up on the third of the month at the sacred temple. Ellie is now a resident of your colony and Eleni Ellie, sorry, Ellie. Ellie is also one of our cats. Uh, she is not in the room with us right now. I'm, I'm guessing she's just outside the door, but um, yeah, she's the the uh, calico cat uh, with the fluffy body type that you'll find in town. Um, the forest guardian from the first game will be here as well. That is also a very good point. Um, and the forest guardian is going to play a much bigger role too, because the forest guardian is going to be your uh, sort of uh, nexus to the main quest of this new game. So whereas you only encountered the Forest Guardian at the very, very end of the first game, in this one you'll be interacting with them a lot more frequently, I, I think is, is sort of the intent there. There was also a question about uh, active skills. Uh, yeah, so active skills are not part of the demo, they're not currently in our dev build. Our goal is to include active skills, just like in the first game, you're going to be able to have a, a distinct build of any four active skills. Uh, you'll train those at your den scratching post, uh, which will be kind of a, a fun way to do that. Um, and I, I'm looking at implementing those pretty soon here, relatively. There's some other things that are a little higher priority right now. Oh, looks like that, uh, that vole got away from you. So the vole was using the new uh, the new pathing uh, right there. I don't know if you noticed <laughs> I didn't that, notice but it. Uh, he was acting a little strangely. Uh, one of the things I actually just worked on this morning is that uh, when you scare off prey in the game, uh, they used to run a little bit erratically. It was kind of like a like a panicked run, and it wasn't very intelligent. Um, I've added some logic to the prey so that they will now a lot more intelligently avoid obstacles and try to get away from you as fast as possible and leave the area if they can. So it, you know, it's going to make it a little bit harder, but uh, it'll make a lot more sense than just having them run around randomly. Um, another thing I want to say about the way I play the game, so there's different ways that you can sprint on the controller. Um, one thing you can do is like double tap um, the direction you want to go to sprint. 
Um, also, the dodge button, which, again, that's like the Logitech controller, so it's going to be different based off of what controller you use. But um, you can do the dodge skill. Oh, should I call it a skill? The dodge button? The, the dodge action. Um, and then you're automatically sprinting after it. And that's what I tend to do, which I know is kind of like, it looks silly. So if you see my cat jumping around a lot, um, that's what's going on. I'm just sprinting. Right. There's a lot of ways to initiate uh, a run. You can uh, charge an attack, and then once you launch into that charged attack, you'll immediately begin running. Uh, you can dodge. That'll put you in run mode. You can double tap, and then there's also a dedicated run command, which on controller is if, I believe, you press in the left stick. Um, so that's another way to toggle that. And, you know, you can you can do it as a press button or as a hold and release, whatever you prefer. Uh, Curtis asks, how many new prey items will there be? Uh, there's a lot. There's like 20, 28 types of sort of docile prey, prey that's not going to fight you back. Uh, yeah, the collections panel highlights it beautifully. Um, there's a ton of them. I mean, compared to the first game, it's it's at least twice as many. And then additionally, you have hostile creatures. Several oh, of these. This is me definitely showing off how good I've done. <laughs> you've <laughs> like defeated, all these question marks. You've defeated one <laughs> so, on, on the Voidling Cat, so that was great. Um, there's several hostile prey that that are hostile critters that also count as prey. I guess like crabs are going to spawn like prey. Bats will sometimes spawn like prey. Um, snakes as well. You might on a rare occasion encounter snakes. So there's quite a few new ones. Is Charlotte marriageable? Asks Fidget Frenzy. Yes, Charlotte is absolutely marriageable. Um, every single adult cat that joins your colony uh, is going to be marriageable in this one. So that is different than the first game. We we were watching, we, we put like a little heart indicator on the chat for the uh, characters that were marriageable in the first game. And I was hoping that that would be like intuitive enough because that's what the games that I grew up with did. Turns out that was not the case. A lot of people were really heartbroken when they found out that the cat that they had spent, you know, five hours trying to woo was uh, rejecting their uh, advances and, as it turned out, was not a marriageable character. Um, so in this one, we decided to get away from that by just making them all marriageable. Just make it easy. <laughs> Unicorn asks, will there be other plushies besides Crampy in the future? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I, I would never promise that. That would be super cool, but uh, not anytime soon. I'll say that much. <laughs> uh, getting getting crampy made was was a really fun process. I I'd, I'd never uh, created a plushie before or worked with a company that creates physical merchandise before, aside from like business cards and T-shirts. Um, so that that was really fun. We got to work with a really talented artist, uh, Dinah Norland, who also has run a series of very successful Kickstarters. Uh, done some work for, uh, I believe, Ooblets as well, which is a super cool game. Um, so Dinah was gracious enough to provide us with some artwork, uh, like concept art for the plush. We submitted that to our contact at Symbiote Studios, which is our, our manufacturer. Um, they went through uh, several prototypes. They, they were very, very uh, good to work with. Um, several prototypes, which they showed to us to make sure that we were happy with the final quality of the plush. Um, and then, of course, when all was said and done, they produced uh, several hundred of them and shipped them to us. Um, so that process takes quite a few months to go through just for one plush, especially when you're a small team like us. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I would never say never, but it's, it's not in our immediate short-term plans. There's a question about will there be other colonies uh, in this game. So the intent of this game is that you're going to start your own colony or in a new area of the world where there aren't really other uh, other sort of living cats uh, walking around. So you're going to be the only colony in this game, but what's really cool about that is that you start as the leader of that. And so we're, we're tying in the custom colony mechanics from the end game of Cattails 1 directly into uh, mechanics that you can interact with right from the get-go in this new game. So you're going to be able to customize your, your colony uh, town. And the intent there is to expand those mechanics as well, to really give you uh, a wide berth of options for making that colony uh, your own. One of the ways that you can do that is uh, you can see these sort of sun icons next to the cat names. Um, that is something that Becca has selected for uh, her colony to have. Um, Oh, I, I left the dev shop in. That's funny. That's a, a dev build thing. 
Sorry, this is... This, <laughs> I won't do that then. This is my, my self-insert cat in the game, Falcon, who... Uh, I was trying to talk to Coco. I didn't right. even, Yeah, that's funny. Uh, Falcon Falcon has a shop where you can buy any item in the game for, for zero coins, because the yeah, dirty we'll secret of all game developers is that we're filthy cheats. And uh, if we can cut a corner in the development of the game uh, to make things easier for us for testing, then we'll do that, you know, ten times out of ten. It just makes things go way faster, so. Yeah. That's why Falcon's there. Falcon's not going to be in the end game. Yeah. Well, this is my information about my colony. Or, it's not a colony, it's an alliance, is what I've decided to call it. Um, its name is Sunflower. Um, I chose the sun emblem, and people call me the captain. Um... I was thinking maybe, like, going, having a little bit of a pirate theme with, like, the eye patch, but I don't know. I'm just messing around. And you, you got the eye patch from the mines, right? I did. I have worked hard on the mines. I got to level 25, which is, like, a rest area in the mines. And I'm going to get ready in my den, and then we'll head over there. Um, but, yeah, the mines are not easy. Or maybe I'm not good at the mines, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. They, they definitely are harder in this game, I would argue, because there's a lot more uh, obstacles and challenges and enemies uh, for you to be aware of. In the first game, you had, you know, you, you had to watch your hunger very closely, and you had bats that would try to stop you, and, of course, there were ghosts as well if you made it to the, the, the real challenging mine. In this one, there's uh, several new types of enemies that all have their own unique mechanics around how they behave and uh, how they attack. And you also have some additional puzzle elements to it. There's some modifiers that different uh, floors can have. Um, you know, poison vents, uh, trapped ruins, um, lava pools, all sorts of things like that that are going to make your progress a little bit trickier. But it, it also keeps things interesting. It keeps things fresh as you're, as you're delving down. Um, there's a question about the, the alpha and the demo. So if you uh, are interested in backing the game on Kickstarter, you can back for the alpha tier. We call that the Founders Edition. Um, that's going to get you access to the alpha of the game when that launches. And our plan for that is August of this year. So coming up pretty soon here this, this summer. Um, there's also a question about the demo, the press demo, uh, which is the build that's out there right now that some content creators are playing. If you're interested in that, there is a link to that on our social media where you can apply. Uh, I will say we have a limited number of keys available for that. Um, so we're, we're being pretty selective with applications there, but if you are a content creator, if you have a YouTube channel or a TikTok page or anything like that, um, where you regularly post content, um, you can apply for a key. And then if we accept your application, we'll email you back. So you can find that on our social media. Um. I wanted to show the pool in your den a little bit. I don't know how much you've shown that. Um, if you ever played Harvest Moon, um, I believe Friends of Mineral Town did it. Um, there's like a TV where you can watch like whole like sitcoms. We're going to have like little shows, I guess you could call it, like episodic, like with seasons, like whole, <laughs> just a little like Easter egg thing. Um, if you want to read these, um, actually, they, this, this, this one's one, not fun, actually. This one right here so actually needs is... rewritten, so maybe don't show that okay. one. Okay, I won't show that one. Um, that, speci like, that, specific that specific one. episode of that the, specific that show. That was really actually, bad timing. Write need, that down. <laughs> I need to write that down. What day is it? It's summer three. Summer three. Um, that's so funny. I just The moment funny. I saw that, I was like, that's the, the one that I that had in mind to fix. That's so funny. Um, um, so don't read that one, but um, yeah, there's some really funny shows that we have written up for those. Yeah, we were kind of trying to figure out, um, so in, in the first game you had Oracle, and Oracle from the Mystic Colony could tell you the weather forecast, which doesn't really help you out all that much, but it was kind of a cool feature. Um, and the reason that that was there in the first place is because in Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley and these other games we were inspired by, you could go watch the TV, and I, I thought that was a wonderful little portion of the game. It was like something that you could do that didn't really um, impact the mechanics that much, but it, it was just fun. It's a good time killer. Um, and we wanted to include that in this game, but it would feel weird having an actual TV since you're cats and you don't like have electricity. <laughs> so we spent some time trying to figure that out. Um, and we, we came up with this idea for a reflecting pool um, where you kind of like gaze into it and you get this vision. Um, and it, it's basically TV. I mean, there's entertainment shows on there as well as educational shows and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of fun because sometimes it's pure fluff and sometimes it's actually really good uh, like tutorial information. It can teach you how to play the game or tell you a secret about um, the mechanics that you might not have known before. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. 
Um, so I'm going into the mines. I've already made it to level 25, and so I'm able, it's considered a rest area, so I'm going to go um, back to that level of the mine. Um, it does get dark at this level of the mine, and so I purchased a headlamp from Molby with my um, mole coins. And um, I'm also going to equip the pet rainbow firefly because it's dark in there. I think it will look cool. Um, and that is a Kickstarter exclusive. So. Right. This this is uh, the pet rainbow firefly is is pre-release exclusive. It's not going to be available after the game launches. Um, and pretty much everybody is getting that. If if you're getting a game key, I mean, if if you're in the standard mm -hmm. edition tier or higher, we're sending out a pet rainbow firefly to you, a uh, steam key for that. So that's pretty cool. The uh, special thing that the pet rainbow firefly does for you that, so the the, the pre-release exclusive pets have some cool mechanics that uh, the normal sort of cosmetic pets do not. The rainbow firefly's advantage is if there's a growing herb around, then one of those, uh, there's like these colorful orbs that are sort of rotating around the firefly you can see right now. One of those is gonna shoot over to the plant and sort of highlight it for you. It's gonna like dance around it uh, to, to really make it obvious that there's something there that you can harvest. But I'm using it in the mines instead <laughs> for extra light. Which actually is, is a great use in this, this dark level. So this is one of the special mine levels uh, called uh, darkness. And the uh, changes there is that in the darkness levels, it's so dark that you probably won't be able to progress unless you wear the headlamp, which you can see Becca's doing very, very wisely. Um, there's also uh, confusion gas vents that are spewing up, if you see those purple vents sometimes. There's mushrooms that'll spawn in the darkness levels. Crickets are more common in the darkness levels as well. Uh, and then these these dark candles, these nasty little critters that are circling Becca right now, those uh, you might find more of in the dark levels as well. Oh gosh. <laughs> so Watch me whiff it here. <laughs> this, is, this is one of those enemies where it's like, you, you really have to study their behavior if you really want to do well against you, them because they act completely differently than, than the bats. Did you make this harder? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's exactly how, how it's been. Um, but once once you get the hang of it, they're really not uh, too difficult to deal with. The trick with the dark candles is that they are actually just going in a circle around you, so their movement is completely predictable. And if you can time things right, you can line up a charged attack to land right where that dark candle is going to be. So another thing about the mines is that uh, we have increased the paths through them. So most levels, like a normal mining level, is going to have two staircases that you can descend, that you can find throughout the mine underneath these boulders. Um, and you can sort of get a hint for what lies below, what the next level is, based on what the staircase looks like. Um, for special levels, like, like the darkness level, there's actually only one staircase. So you'll end up spending a little bit more time on them. They end up being a little bit more of a challenge, but some of those special levels are actually beneficial, so you, you might want to hit them. There's like a lake level where you might find fish, which is great if you're running low on hunger. There's also a jungle level where you might find some fresh herbs, like healing herbs, that might help you out. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of questions about uh, what cats are returning and which ones are not. We, we had to, to sort of make difficult decisions about which cats were going to be back and which ones were not. Uh, so Becca just had yeah, a confusion vent there. Uh, we, we really wanted to include a lot of new characters in this game, so we, we picked out uh, some fan favorites and some of the characters that we felt were, were critical to the operation of your new colony, uh, like a doctor and a shopkeeper, and then we tried to really fill most of the new spots, or most of the rest of the spots, with, with new cats so that it's sort of a new experience. Um, but I will also say, if there is a cat that did not make it into the game that you really, really wish did, um, NPCs are one of the things that are going to be moddable for this game, uh, so you could add the character in later, or someone else could, and you could download a mod, something like that. I'm just uh, getting caught up on chat here. So you're on you're on level 27. Yes. So should we try to make it um, to 50? Is that the? I'm trying to decide if I should put the firefly away and get out um, the. I'm blanking on what he's called, the mole to help me. The other kick. Oh other yeah, uh, Mulbert. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah I, Mulbert's not going to help you too much right now because you're not low enough to find diamonds. Oh yeah. But I mean, that's a good point. Mulbert is cool. <laughs> so the other uh, pre-release exclusive pet is Mulbert, who is a mole that's going to follow you around. Uh, super cute. Uh, Mulbert actually tunnels underground to get to you instead of walking because, you know, yeah, it's I'm a mole. Yeah, I'm going to equip him just because he's cute. 
Yeah, kind of, kind of a cute little mole, and has a matching eye patch, so that's kind of oh special. Gosh. I'm, <laughs> I'm really struggling You're with there. the controls under the pressure. Um, Mulbert has a very sensitive nose and is accustomed to the scent of diamond. So if you are low enough into the earth where you're going to encounter diamond, which Becca is currently not, um, then Mulbert can actually give you a, a hint, a little pop-up, an alert, if uh, if Mulbert senses that there are diamonds around. So that's kind of kind of a neat feature. There's a question about, do we pass out at 2 a.m., or is it like the previous game where we can stay up all the time? So we are inspired by real-world cats. Real-world cats sleep like 15 hours a day. Um, they are up at random hours of the night. They're up at random hours of the day. They sleep during the day. They sleep during the night. We want to make the game as uh, as approachable for any playstyle as possible. So you can stay up at all hours if you want. There's actually nothing that's forcing you to go to sleep. Uh, the advantage of going to sleep somewhat regularly is that you'll get an experience bonus if you haven't slept in a while. But you could sleep through the days and play just at night, or you could sleep through the nights and play just in the days. It's whatever you want to do. Uh, just like real cats. There's a comment about the cave music. Yeah, the, the cave music is pretty cool. So there's, there's a different uh, musical track that plays every 25 levels as you're delving through the caves. Um, I did a lot of work on the, the ambiance of the cave as well, so there's like water dripping noises and there's whooshing noises, um, and I, I did a lot of foley work where like I would just, you know, breathe into a mic mm -hmm. and then slow it down and lower the pitch and like try to clean it up a little bit um, to, really, to really give it that sort of creepy underground cave vibe. So the music sort of comes in and then it cuts out and then it comes back in um, to, to really make it sort of an atmospheric experience. Really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, shout out to Tormod. Um, yeah, Tormod uh, Garvin yeah. Uh, wrote the music for the entire game, uh, including cave music, and just did a, an excellent job with it. There's <laughs> a suggestion here in chat. You should get an extra speed plus violence bonus at 3 a.m., just like real cats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, sometimes our, our cats do that. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. We'll be like up in the bedroom trying to get to sleep and we'll just hear, you know, the cats sprinting around the kitchen for no reason at 2am. So I couldn't remember what daisies use or did and so I used one. I brought them with me to use and I should have just asked you because they confused me. <laughs> uh, will you keep adding uh, mobs as updates once the game is complete? That, that's a good question. So we have a roadmap page on our website right now where we're highlighting uh, some of the major updates that we have planned. At the moment we have the, of course, the alpha, the beta, and then the full release are the major things coming up. Uh, after the full release we're planning to do at least two major updates as well. Um, no news on quite yet what those are going to contain. Um, they, they might have more mobs, they might have something in the mind, I don't know yet. Um, we'll see as we get there. Uh, there was also a question about the stretch goals on the Kickstarter and whether or not those would be included in the initial release. Um, basically it's going to depend on how development goes. So, of course we're a very, very small shop. It's literally us and then of course our two cats, you know, making the game. Um, along with a, a handful of contractors we've been working with. So uh, we're going to keep you all updated no matter what happens. Uh, we're going to be trying to post monthly updates to the Kickstarter page just to let you all know the status of development and what we've been working on lately and be as transparent as possible. Um, if everything goes according to plan, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll include everything in the initial release. But um, things that are not stretch goals obviously have priority over things that are stretch goals. So we're going to work on those first and then the stretch goal stuff will be added. So just you know, keep an eye on our updates, um, keep an eye on our social media. We'll let you guys know no matter what. That's kind of the plan. Uh, there's a question here about achievements. Yeah, I, I have a lot of great ideas about that. I have a, a really cool idea for how to sort of revamp that system and tie it to some in-game rewards. Um, I, I haven't talked about that publicly yet, but just know that something is coming with that. Um, I, I don't want to share too much about that in case I decide to go another route with it, but um, just know I, I do have an idea about that, a uh, pretty good idea, I think, and I'm hopeful that it'll get implemented. I think you'll like it. Yeah, comments about the ice level. The ice levels are cool. So in the ice levels, you'll find crystals, which have kind of a cool reflective uh, shader effect on them. You'll run into ghosts, which are unique enemies to the ice levels. 
Um, but the advantage of the ice levels is you're way more likely to encounter gemstones there. So the rocks that have the, the sort of quartz poking out of them, uh, that have the good stuff that's worth the real mole cash, you'll find way more of that on the ice levels than you would anywhere else. Question about, will that uh, something with the achievements have anything to do with the Switch release? That is one of the, the big uh, things about the achievements that, that I really want to revamp. I like the, the concept of achievements as like tasks that you do and then you get rewarded for. Um, Switch doesn't, uh, the, the Nintendo Switch doesn't have anything built out for that natively, but I would love to create a system supported by the game natively that would reward you for doing things that I would then tie that into the Steam achievements. So they would sort of go hand in hand, but that system would also be available cross-platform as well, even if you're not playing it on Steam. Can you equip multiple pets at once? Yes, you... <laughs> So something that's cool about the accessory system is there is no limits. You could equip every accessory in the game at once if you wanted. And there's like 45 accessories right now. I Challenge mean, there's, accepted. There's an absurd amount. Um, we're not limiting that in any way. There's like 10 pets, I think. You could have all 10 pets with you at once if you wanted. Um, I, I don't see any reason to restrict that. Um, and, you know, your, your cat might look really, really interesting with 40 pieces of clothing on and an army of bugs following them and a mole as well. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You can, you can do whatever you want with that. <laughs> what happened to Nebula? Uh, that, that was the color that I was playing with in the previous dev live stream. So, mm. this is, this is actually kind of a, a fun fact. Um, the save load system was actually not built until a week and a half ago. So at the point that the last dev stream was running, uh, there was no way to save your progress. None whatsoever. So every time I booted up the game, I would start from scratch, start completely fresh. Um, so that, that save file, that progress is lost, but the color is still there, because the color actually gets saved to your machine in a different place. Um, so we, we do still have the nebula color, that's still floating around. Uh, question about, so are all the skins going to be free? I, I assume you mean the coat colors? Mm -hmm. If so, yes. So the concept behind that, uh, actually we've expanded this system dramatically from the first game. Um, you'll start with, with 30 options to pick from, 30 presets, but you can actually design your own in-game. There's an entire uh, menu for that. You can make it, you know, any color tabby, any color calico. Whatever you want to do with that, you can use the actual tools that we're using to build these out. You can use that in-game. Um, it works pretty well. Yeah. It saves a copy of that to your hard drive as an image file. You can send that image file to your friends. They can use your color. It's pretty cool. We're very excited about that. You won't have to buy them from the shop. Uh, they're not going to be restricted by, you know, Steam keys or DLC or anything like that. It's just available to you from the start. Yeah. So just kind of like to show um, how you do that. So for mine, I um, I renamed mine um, Becca Brown Tabby, but um, I had actually taken this made a copy of it, um, um, and then I edited it in here to make it look more like um, what I wanted, and then saved it, and then renamed it, and then um, that's how that's how I got this color. So, yeah, instead of like going through all the way, that's just kind of like the over overview of what you can do. Yeah, and, and something kind of cool about that, uh, there, there was a lot of people in the first game who like, they would unlock the colors, but then the colors got saved to your save file, which ones you had unlocked, which ones you didn't. And it was kind of a kind of a bummer when you made a new save file, because it was like, oh, I need to go unlock all those colors again, or I, I need to input all these promo codes again, it was kind of a mess. For this new one, the colors are actually saved completely separately from your save file, so if, if Becca were to make a new file on the same machine, she would still have access to every color that she's created, still have access to any color that she's downloaded from the internet, anything like that. They're actually completely separate from the save files. <laughs> yeah, the, the coat coloring uh, tab can definitely be overwhelming. It's a lot, a lot of things. There's like 28 individual points of coloration and that's not including the eyes, which you can color separately as well. Um, but the good news is you don't have to touch any of that if you don't want to, because there's 30 presets that are in virtually every natural shade of cat color you could imagine with pretty much any natural pattern of cat that you could imagine. You know, Bengals, Tabbies, uh, tortoise shells, solid colors, bi colors, all that stuff. Um, so you can kind of interact with the system as much or as little as you want. You can either jump in and spend an hour making your perfect, you know, coat color, or you can just use a preset, download one from the internet, 
and just go from there. Totally fine. Whatever you want to do. A question about how many generations can you play as? Just two or more? So the, the generations system is uh, the New Game Plus stretch goal that we unlocked. So the concept behind that is that once you've played far enough into the game to be married and have a litter of kittens, uh, you're going to eventually be able to select one of those kittens to create a new file as. So it's, it's, a, new, it's a form of New Game Plus. You're going to essentially start over in several ways, but you'll keep some of your progress in specific areas, and you'll also have some bonuses for, for creating that new file um, that we'll talk about more later. Um, so the concept behind that is that pretty much everything's going to reset. I mean, your relationships with other NPCs is going to reset. Your progress in the main story will also reset. Um, so you, theoretically, we're, we're hoping you'll be able to chain that infinitely, right? You could, you could uh, play as Cat A, and Cat A gets married and has Kitten B, and then you create a new file as Cat B, and then Cat B gets married and has Kitten C, and then you create a new file as Kitten C, you know. Um, so in, in theory, that should, that should uh, I don't see any reason that couldn't continue infinitely. There is a question about, in New Game Plus, will the town's population change? Uh, no, so it, it will not. That's, that's one of the big things about uh, New Game Plus, is we're, we're just going to reset that. Um, part of that reason is the art behind the characters and the writing behind the characters. So when, when we go to create a new character for the game, we're thinking about their personality, we're thinking about uh, their appearance, we're thinking about the, the things that they like, the things that they don't like. Um, that requires a lot of, of manual work to establish, and then on top of that, we have to work with an artist to get, you know, eight different emotional portraits sorted out, um, and then we have to write it as well, which, you know, it, it can feel like writing a novel sometimes, the amount of text that goes into a game like this just to get unique dialogue elements or, like, events or things of that nature. So the, the cast of characters is going to remain the same, no matter which generation you're on. Um, that That's... Yeah, that, that's basically why we're calling it New Game Plus, because um, pretty much everything's going to remain the same. You'll just start with several bonuses, and you'll keep some of the progress that you've made in specific areas. Um, one of those areas, for example, is uh, you'll spend a lot of time uh, recruiting members to your colony and uh, customizing the layout of your colony town. Uh, one thing that we definitely want to do is we want you to preserve that, so when you start your new file, you should keep the same town layout and keep any resident that you've already recruited because that, that would be a lot to redo and we, we do want it to feel a little bit like you're still living in the same, you know, the same place. Um, like you are actually the, the child of, of the original character that you were playing as. Will you be able to customize your kittens? And will it be possible for an NPC to propose to you than the other way around? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting really idea. Um, maybe. Uh, that's not currently a feature, but but maybe someday. It's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. um, customizing your kitten, uh, when you're playing as them in the New Game Plus, absolutely. You'll have full control over your kitten, just like you do over your current character. Um, you will also have some degree of control over what your kittens look like, just like in the first game, where you got three choices, and it was based on your coloration and your mate's coloration. We, we want to build something very similar to that, so, you know, stay tuned, but yeah, you'll, you'll have some degree of control there. There's a question, would you maybe consider signed physical goods as an add-on? That's, that's a funny one. Um, I, I think that's funny. I, I don't know that uh, either of our signatures are, are worth a whole lot. <laughs> no. um, but we, we had already planned that uh, for yeah. the, the physical reward boxes when we ship those out, we do want to just write a real quick yeah, just right, thank, thank you. you, you know, and then we'll we'll probably sign yeah. off on those. So if you have a physical rewards box coming, there will probably be some form of handwritten thank you in it, mm -hmm. um, if that's something that's interesting to you. But I, I don't expect for the majority of people that that's something that's, you know, a selling point. All right, catching up on chat here. Uh, let's see, here's some questions what? we already answered early in the stream. What should I buy from Molo is a good question. That is a good question. Um, I can afford, um, I can afford these glowing mushrooms, which would be den decor, um, the boulder and the rock. I can also buy a music disc to play in my den. Um, I, I wish you had enough for the I rock. I really wanted the captain hat. Oh, that's a shame. Um, we can cheat. 
Or you could just go back down. <laughs> we and, could cheat. If, if you got like three more quartz, you know, you'd have enough. It, you're pretty um, close. Yeah, I really want the pet rock debris. That's a lot, though. But that's too much. The pet rock um, debris was Becca's idea. I think it's one of the best things in the entire game. Um, so when when you get the game, you got to get the pet rock debris. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. You can thank Becca for that. <laughs> people are. It looks like a lot of people are saying the mushroom save for the pet rock. Um, yeah, I definitely see a lot of gold mushroom. I'm not good at saving my money, so I'm going to. <laughs> Get the glowing mushroom. So th this is a piece of furniture, um, yes. which is cool. So the, the furniture mechanics are once you've unlocked a piece of furniture, you can go to your den, you can place it anywhere you want in your den. It's it's free placement system. Um, and you can also place as many copies of it as you want after it's unlocked. So you could put one down, you could put a thousand down, doesn't matter. Um, you already have it unlocked, so it doesn't really matter. So um, do you want to put one in your den somewhere? I do. I think that's a cool idea. Thunder has a question, will you be able to play as Cat A again if you want to after you start your new game plus as Cat B? Yeah, so the goal there is that when you create the new game plus, it's going to actually save to a separate save slot. So your your original save slot is Cat A. That's, that's not going to be touched, it's not going to get overwritten by new game plus. You'll just create a new save slot for your new game plus. Um, we should explain to them what I'm doing because I decided to renovate a little do, bit. Do you want to explain? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, one of the really big features in the game is, of course, all the den customization mechanics that were not available in the first game. Um, of course, you could upgrade your den in the first game, but they were preset upgrades. In this game, we've just gridded out the den, and you can make your den into any shape that you want, as long as it fits on this grid. Um, you can change where the walls are, change where the floors are. It costs a little bit of muse every time you place down a tile, but then you keep that credit for later if you ever want to move it around. Um, you can also switch up the style of different rooms in your den, so you can like, yeah, like here you can change out what, what walls you're using, what floors you're using, and you can use up to six different styles at any given time. So if you wanted every room in your den to have a different sort of design motif, you could totally do that. Um, I love how this feature turned out. It, it was a, a childhood dream of mine when I was young. I was playing Animal Crossing and I had this vision where like you could just freely design your the interior of your house, the, the floor plan of your house, and that somehow like uh, Rossetti, like the mole, you know, would come up and like show you a blueprint and then like take his big old pickaxe and like rework your, you know, your, your house floor plan. Um, and so I, I knew with this opportunity with Cattail's Wildwood story, I had to build basically that exact vision um, and I, I think it turned out pretty cool. So Becca has just confirmed her new floor plan. Mm -hmm. Mulby just, you know, Mulby, Mulby works like a machine, um, super, super quick at doing den renovations. And now there's all this extra open space that's been opened up in the side of the den. Um, so now that could be furnished with whatever you want. Um, it could be decorated, you could leave items in it. It's perfectly usable floor space. It's going to be kind of expensive to uh, to fully build out the entire den. You could do it. You could fill this entire blueprint with floor space. You would have a giant square house, I guess. Um, that would be very, very expensive in terms of Muse, but it, it would be an interesting late game uh, goal, I guess, for somebody who has a lot of Muse and doesn't know what to spend them on. I'm having, I'm having trouble changing, modifying the style. Though. Oh, you're, yeah, so... Am I um, pressing the wrong buttons? <laughs> yeah, so there, there's a... Modify styles is going to change out uh, the definition of the styles. Then, if you go back to the other menu... Okay, I want to... Uh, what do I want? I guess I'll do this stone... So the, this is style number one, so this is going to overwrite everything you currently have down, because every tile that you've laid down is style it's number style one. style number one. Yep. Let's just try this for now. So then if you want to use a different style, you can uh, mm -hmm. press select and that's going to rotate out which your active style gotcha. is. Gotcha. And then that's you can what... place those down or you can overwrite your existing that's tiles. That's right. Yeah, it's I a didn't, little bit I didn't read. First. <laughs> <laughs> there's a question about will any NPCs get to wear accessories too? Yes, there's two NPCs with accessories. Crampy, of course, has the beaky mask. Uh, that's an accessory you can unlock. And Charlotte has a, a a very spiky collar that does not look very inviting whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah, so now your your den has this this rocky appearance. It's almost like you're living in a cave or like in the highlands somewhere underneath some tumble down boulders. Oh, we have a lot of stuff unlocked. Okay. Yeah, at the moment, okay. pretty much everything is unlocked uh, <laughs> for, for the demo. Um, 
because there, there's a lot of shops that need to be built before they get moved around. There's the glowing mushrooms, so we just got so these glowing mushrooms. These. So these give off kind of a bluish green light. Um, they're kind of cool. So like I was saying earlier, you can place as many of them as you want once you have it unlocked. You could literally fill the entire den with thousands of copies of the mushrooms if you wanted to. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> Plans for festival games. That's an interesting question. Um, there's going to be festival games. I can't talk too much more about that yet. <laughs> Festivals are not implemented yet, but I, I have some great ideas for that. Uh, will you be able to zoom in to see your kitty? Like in some games where you use the scroll wheel to zoom in, uh, it'd be nice to take screenshots. Yes, uh, if, if you go to the video options in the game, this, this is actually already implemented. You can change the zoom, so like the base zoom, how, how chunky the pixels are essentially. Uh, you can zoom all the way up to like 12 times, I think, which, which would really give you a good, a good view of your cat if you want to take a screenshot of it. And you can also zoom all the way out to one to one. So instead of these big, chunky, you know, pixel art pixels, it would be every pixel of your monitor, which are very, very small, would be a pixel in game. A lot, a lot of questions here. I'm just trying to get caught up. I'm answering one of the questions by just doing it. Um, you can move your bed and other stuff around. Yeah, you can move everything in the den. I mean, it, yeah. it's fully, fully uh, like modifiable. It's a priority. Like as soon as you come in. Right. Uh, th there's also <laughs> there's other beds you can unlock. So not just the grass bed. There's other storage crates if you don't want to use the box. Um, there's there's other light sources if you don't like the firefly jars. A lot of options there. And uh, there's a question about rotating furniture. Yeah, several items of furniture are rotatable. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. How big is the map going to be? It's going to be bigger than what's in the demo. Um, we'll see. It, the map size is kind of an interesting... Uh, it's, it's a balancing thing. You don't want to make it so big the player couldn't reasonably get from one corner to the other in the span of an in-game day but you don't want it to be too small that it feels constrained or that I can't fit everything that I need to fit into the game, like main story elements, uh, different types of prey, different types of herbs. So that's sort of, it's an ongoing discussion uh, in development, figuring out the correct size. Definitely bigger than what's currently in the game though. Question about gardening, how will gardening work? Yeah, that's a, that's a super cool feature, which I'm still actively building out. Uh, what gardening is going to look like is you'll unlock a plot of land to garden in. It will have several uh, predetermined spots where you can plant a seed. Um, you will create seeds by taking existing herbs. So you'll find an herb out in the wild, and based on the quality of that herb, you can turn that into a number of seeds that can be planted. If you tend to that seed every single day and you do a good job of that, then that plant will grow up, and based on how well you treated it, you'll get a different quality herb out of it. Um, so the highest quality is, is three star. If you can get three star quality out, you can turn that into a ton of seeds and then you can keep the process going. Um, but you'll have to unlock seed recipes in order to be able to grow different crops. So for example, catnip. Catnip is very, very valuable. You will not start the game being able to grow catnip because you don't have the recipe to turn catnip into catnip seeds. You'll unlock that uh, pretty late game, I think, but then it's gonna be a really powerful cash crop. So. That's a, a very high-level overview of how that system looks. All right, just getting caught up here. Will you be able to expand your inventory? Yes. So items stack now in your inventory. It starts out that... Uh, so you, you'll always have 30 slots in your inventory, so you can store 30 unique items. But when you start the game, you can stack any item up to three. So three copies of the same item. So there you've got two store raspberries stacked up to three. Um, and then another stack of two because it's more than three. So it had to get split. Upgrading your inventory is going to increase the number of items that can be stored in a single stack. So you can go all the way up to nine. You would be able to store nine raspberries in a single slot, um, but then still hold 30 unique items across your 30 inventory uh, slots. Let's see here. A lot, a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be able to decide whether to accept a gift or not? Maybe rejecting a gift is similar to disliking it. Um, there, there's not really a mechanic that says how me, the player, feels about an NPC. So mechanically, disliking a gift uh, is is not 
super relevant at the moment. Um, so if, if an NPC offers you a gift, it'll just get added to your inventory, but you could potentially re-gift it later, you could sell it, you could drop it. Um, anything like that. I, I think the closest thing to rejecting a gift is they could give it to you and then you could just immediately give it right back, and, and that would totally work. Alright. A lot of questions about kittens. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll repeat my stance, which I've, I've said in a couple uh, previous uh, live streams, um, that we just can't talk about kittens yet. It's something that's coming way later, and we don't want to talk about it yet. Um, I do want to point out the um, rainbow firefly in use here. Um, so you can see like this little red orb is helping highlight the herbs that I can gather. So it's a really, really useful thing. Um, yeah, kind of a neat little bit of functionality there. Uh, some questions about active skills, specifically spawn allies. Um, again, not a feature that's been implemented yet, so I, I don't really want to comment on it. There will probably be something similar to spawn allies. I, I couldn't comment on exactly how that'll work yet. Will certain cats have different schedules, being awake for more of the day or the night? Yeah, uh, every NPC is going to have their own daily schedule. They're going to walk around camp, they're going to go do their things. Uh, right now for the demo, they just kind of stand around. I, I know that's kind of a bummer, but um, that's coming soon. The The real reason for that is that uh, the, the colony customization systems of building out your colony exactly how you want it adds a huge layer of complexity when you're also talking about moving cats within that physical space. Because uh, you think about, what if I put a bunch of blockers in the way of where this cat is trying to get to? You know, I, I just blocked it off with trees or something. Um, so that's a, that's a big mess, a big mechanical challenge to sort out. But uh, the long story is that eventually, yes, the cats will have schedules, they'll walk around, they'll, they'll do their thing. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but I'm going to anyways. Um, because we got that question about um, spawning allies, that active skill from the first game, something that we are hoping to do with this game is, and like no promises, but <laughs> um, if you've played like Rune Factory 4 or Rune Factory 5, which isn't as good as Rune Factory 4 in my humble opinion, um, <laughs> then we hope to make it so you can bring your friends with you. Um, which hasn't been implemented yet. Um, not 100% sure, but right. But that that will that, that will be would... a feature, the buddy system, as, yes. as we're calling it. Yeah. Um, which I'm very excited about because um, it, it'll yeah. look similar to how the kittens are in the first game. You can bring them with you on your adventures. They'll help you out by hunting and fighting and all that. Um, but we're hoping to expand that a little bit and and give them some more uniqueness, um, which we will definitely talk about more in the future. Yeah. So like we, that's all like all we have to like say about that because it doesn't exist yet, but um, that's something that we're hoping to do, which I feel like is exciting. Right. All right, we are actually getting pretty close to the uh, the hour mark here, so we'll probably wrap things up pretty soon here. Um, but I, I don't know, we'll, we'll hang around and chat right until about six o'clock, just a heads up for everybody. <laughs> uh, Temporal Sunrise asks, Becca, what didn't you like about Rune Factory 5? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> so, Rune Factory 4 is one of my favorite games. Like, it's in my top three of favorite games, and so I think I just had um, a really high expectations, and I was looking forward to it for a long time. Um, and it, I don't know, it just didn't click with me the same way that Rune Factory 4 does. So, if you are, if you're new to, if you haven't played a Rune Factory game, I'd recommend getting um, Rune Factory 4. So, yeah. not <laughs> good, good response. I, uh, Cat Squid asks if you're willing to share what features are you going to be working on implementing next? What new things can we expect to see in the alpha? Uh, so right now, at, at this exact moment, I'm, I'm refining and rebalancing a lot of things. I'm also doing a lot of bug fixes. Um, so that, that's probably what uh, this development time closer to the, the Kickstarter campaign will look like. Um, the, the plan is totally to have several new features in the alpha that are not currently available in the demo. For sure I want to get like uh, your, your ally cats that are going to spawn randomly in the wild and help you with, with fights. Um, that I want to get implemented. I'd love to get the active skills in as well because right now you can earn experience points uh, but you can't spend them anywhere uh, which, which is kind of a shame so they just accumulate. So those are two really big things coming up next. Also save slots. I, I'm really hopeful that I'll hook it up so that you'll have multiple save slots. For the demo, there's just one. It makes it easier that way. Um, 
and then we'll we'll see what else on top of that because uh, there, there's several months here and it all it really all depends basically on how long it takes to implement these things because uh, some of these things it sounds like it's going to take a week and it ends up taking a month and some of the things it sounds like it's going to take a month and it ends up taking a day so uh, you know when, once we get down into the weeds of it that's when we can really start to get an idea of how quickly things are going to progress. Will the alpha be on Mac? Yes, the demo is only available for Windows, but the alpha, the beta, and the full release we are going to be building for Mac. I, I actually I have a build of the game that runs on Mac right now, so I'm confident in saying that we can uh, have the alpha also run on Mac. I have a, a MacBook or a, a Mac Mini, Mac Mini over there that I've been using to develop that. <laughs> Where are all these void cats coming from? Is there a way to defeat them once and for all? Gonna have to play the game to figure that out, sorry. <laughs> uh, K. Meyer asks, will you be able to choose your colony's capital, like put it in the marsh or on the beach? Yeah, that is a planned feature. So your colony will always physically be located in the center of the map. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, mechanical reasons behind that. But you're going to get the option from the get-go, right after the tutorial, to decide what biome you want to settle in. So that's going to change the initial layout of your colony, and also the decor around your colony, right? Like, are the trees going to be oaks, or are they going to be willows? What's the water going to look like? What's the grass going to look like? Um, that's going to depend on your decision there. So uh, you'll be able to pick, like, if you want to settle in the plains, or in the woods, or in the highlands, or, you know, in the swamp, that kind of stuff. You'll, you'll get that choice right out the gate. All right, and with that, we are uh, actually a minute over the mark. So that that was a pretty good live stream, I think. We yeah. got to a lot of questions there. Um, I had fun watching Becca play. <laughs> I had the fun job. I just got to play it for, for an hour, so you know. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we'll we'll probably go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, make sure that you save your progress if you want to keep that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, one last time, the game is currently on Kickstarter. If you're interested in it at all, if it seems like a game you'd enjoy playing. Please go check that out. Uh, it's cattailsgame.com forward slash KS. That will take you right there to the Kickstarter campaign. Um, this lovely rainbow firefly is, of course, a backer reward. If you back us on Kickstarter, you're not going to be able to get that once the game releases. And we're giving that to pretty much everybody. If you back the game, you get a copy of the game, um, and it's not on Switch, you're going to get that rainbow firefly. So. Uh, go check that out. Uh, thank you all again. If you've already backed us on Kickstarter, thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Um, we couldn't be, you know, living our dream and making video games about cats if it wasn't for you guys. So, thanks again. Uh, we're going to sign off here and end the live stream. Uh, so, until next time, we'll talk to you then.